we'll pick right back up where we left off. Um, one of the things I want to do before I go any further, uh, I've returned to object mode here. Uh, I want to go ahead and save this so I have my progress saved out. So I'm going to go to Save Scene As. And in a hand folder that I've created, I'm just going to save this as Hand01. I want to make sure that I'm saving iteratively as I go. Well, we're going to create our first finger from this section. And to do that, I'm going to start off by making my pointer finger first. I'll select all three faces representing that pointer finger. And I'm going to go to Extrude by hitting Extrude the selected component. Under Edit Mesh, I can choose Extrude, or I can do this on the polygon shelf. This will activate my manipulator, which, again, I never really like using. I prefer to jump straight to the Scale tool by hitting R on the keyboard and scaling this in uniformly with the yellow box in the center. I'll then move this outwards just a little bit. And what I'm trying to do is actually to create a division which separates this finger from the hand. This is going to allow me now to come into the corners of this and really round out the edges of this finger when I go into the vertex component mode. If I do this right, it should really start to look like a stop sign. I also want to look from the top down and make sure my finger really isn't coming inward on the hand all that much. So there we go. I think that's a pretty good starting point. Well, there's several ways to build out the rest of this finger. And what I'm going to do, actually, is go on a wireframe there just so I can find that face. Well, what I want you want to do is extrude this face all the way across the length of the finger. I could go extrude to the first knuckle and then to the second and then to the fingertip. But I find it's going to be easier to come back in with the Insert Edge Loop tool and cut that up later. This will just help me save time as I'm working. So again, with Edit Mesh, Keep Faces Together checked, make sure that's on, I'm going to hit Extrude, switch to the Move tool by hitting W, and pull this finger all the way out. Now if you're wondering the length that you should go, well, just compare it to an actual image, or maybe to your own hand. Normally, your fingers are just under the size of the entire hand itself. You don't want to go too long with this. So you can see here, that's what I've done. Let's pull this back just a little bit. I'll go from the top, and I will hit R for the Scale tool. And with this blue box, I'm going to flatten the finger out. I'm going to take the final center face and just move this one out as well, which is going to help me create a more tapered form at the center. I'm going to go into the vertex component mode, grab a, grab a selection over these tip vertices, and I'm going to hit R. And I want to scale this thinner just a little bit and move it up. The point being that your fingers taper towards the end in all directions, and I want to make sure I've got that taper going. You might also want to move up your edge connection now so that we have a very flush connection between the hand and the finger. Well, let's create some divisions across this hand. We need to be able to cut this up. And one of the things about your finger as well is that the finger is actually comprised of three bones. The proximal phalange, which is the bone nearest to the hand, the intermediate bone, which is in the middle, and the distal bone, which is the smallest and towards the edge. Each of these bones diminish in size as we get further away from the hand. So what I'm going to want to do is come in with the Edit Mesh Insert Edge Loop tool. And I'm going to cut one division almost halfway down the hand, just under halfway. And that's going to be the first division. I'll hit R for the Scale tool and just scale this flat. Then I'll go to Edit Mesh and again choose the Insert Edge Loop tool and 
go a little bit over halfway through the next section. And again, hit R, and scale is flat. And I think now we've got a pretty good breakdown, finger by finger. Well, again, if you're really trying to keep your polygon count low, this might be where I stop with the divisions that I add for this finger. But we're going to do a little bit more detailing on this, just because I think it's worthwhile in this tutorial to see how much more we can add in without really complicating it too much. One of the big things that I think we can work on is the fact that with the knuckles, we want to have some division for as these faces bend, for them not to stretch too much. In fact, if I was to take these faces, if I was animating this and I wanted to really bend this, I'm going to have a very harsh transition, which again, if I'm really trying to keep that polygon count low, might be all I can really afford. But we're going to push this a little bit more. And I'm going to do it by again grabbing the Insert Edge Loop Tool. Under Edit Mesh, Insert Edge Loop Tool. I'm going to cut one division to each side of my knuckles. And this is going to help me really define out these knuckles and the shape of my silhouette a little bit more. Let me go into my side view. I'll hit spacebar and spacebar again in the side view. And I'll take a look at this in smooth shaded. Actually, let's, let's examine this with shading x-ray turned on. And we might be able to see this a little bit better. Let's again come in and maybe flatten out some of these divisions if they look too rounded. And my suggestion here is to try and go for sort of an hourglass shape. Widen this out at the top and start tapering towards the bottom. But at the very end, let it flare out just a little bit. And this is going to allow your knuckles to have some room so that when they do bend, they don't actually intersect each other. You don't want your finger to bend so far that it intersects the previous part. I want to get a little bit of a crease here. And we can pull up the top side as well to get the ridge for where those bones connect. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the connection further on. And there we go. I think that profile is working pretty nicely. Let's take a look from the top down now. And we can actually even go into the top view. Usually you have to widen out your knuckles a little bit, just so you can get them to feel a little bit more accurate. So I'm going to grab a selection over the center of these and scale them out with the red square. And if you need to, uh, as I see here, actually select a row of edges uh, and manipulate some of those changes to widen the bottom face, and that's what we're going to do. Well, one last thing I want to do, I, I think we can actually go for a little bit more roundness along the length of this finger. And instead of actually inserting an edge loop that goes all the way around the hand here, I'm actually going to take the split polygon tool and manually cut this. You'll see the reason for this in just a few minutes. Well, I'm going to start at this face right here. Again, I'm not going to start all the way at the edge, but I'm going to start right here. And I'm going to cut my faces all the way through the model by clicking from edge to edge. I can even drag where I want my connection to be. I'm going to cut manually all the way around the model. And if it's not accurate, we can fix it in a bit. stop just underneath this finger, right about here, and I will hit enter to complete the operation, and I will have created new geometry. Now the problem is I'm going to have n-gons, five-sided faces, at the edge of this, but we're going to get resolving that in just a few minutes as well. So hold on, we're going to go to the next video.